Welcome to the Payday with Ray Ray podcast, hosted by yours truly, Rachel Bell. I'm here to make your life easier as an entrepreneur and teach you everything I've learned about building multiple seven-figure online businesses. And on this podcast, I'll be giving you my best advice, trainings, and mindset shifts so you can grow your business and most importantly, make every day your payday. Hey, yo, guys, welcome back to another episode of Payday with Ray Ray. (sighs) Felt like that was appropriate. You know what I mean? It's a it's a Friday. It's payday. We got to get started on the right foot. So, and on the right beat. Boom, 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 boom. All right. So, this episode is all about the six-figure mindset. And when I say six-figure mindset, I'm not just talking about think abundantly and always do your best and take messy action. Yes, those things are very, very important, but we're going to dive so deep into the mindset shifts and the hidden beliefs, the blockages and the behaviors that are right now probably preventing you from, even if you're at the six-figure level already, thinking and behaving and acting in alignment with true abundance and with true confidence that you need in order to continue to build your business, even if you're starting from zero or you're already having some momentum online, or maybe you are you know, already killing it, but you just don't feel like you're killing it on the inside. You know what I mean? Okay. So I love coaching and I love mentoring. And you guys know that I'm a nerd about the coaching industry because sooner or later, someone will you know, go through growing their business and they will start out with a lot of fire in their belly. They start out with a lot of motivation, a lot of inspiration. They're like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to make 10K per month and it's going to be amazing. And then they actually get started and they're like, oh, business is hard. (laughs) It's difficult for me. And it's funny to get to that point. And I, and I really, really honor anyone who decides to walk this path because it's a very challenging one to walk. And I see a lot of students inside of my coaching program, Online Coach Accelerator, who enter the program with this intense passion and this intense drive to achieve. And without fail, every single one of them hits a wall at some point because this is just a dramatic growth curve. And they're like, man, business is so hard. It's way harder than I actually expected it to be. And I remember watching an episode of the Shark Tank one time and they were the investors were talking amongst themselves and they were laughing about the fact that, man, if I knew how difficult entrepreneurship would be, I would have never started And there's something beautiful about having the naiveness or the naivety or whatever that word is about not knowing what the path really holds ahead and just going for it anyway. And then hitting the point of being like, oh, damn, I'm being challenged beyond my wildest beliefs or beyond my wildest expectations. So what I love about this statement of like, man, business is hard is that business is not actually the hard part. And I'll explain more about that in a second. But first, I want to open up by letting you know who is sponsoring and bringing this episode to us today. And we're so lucky. We're so lucky to have this company on our side, guys. It's OCU. Duh. It's Online Coach University, my business. <laughs> It's my business. Online Coach University is my online education platform where I help online coaches start, grow, and scale their businesses. And you guys are most familiar with Online Coach Accelerator, our accelerator program for people who want to enter into a 90-day business sprint where I mentor them with my team to grow their businesses, package their offer, choose their niche, and finally get their first paying clients and go full-time online. And that is opening up in February, which is just a few weeks away. So if you want to be the first to know when we open enrollment and make sure that you're able to get in the loop and get amazing trainings in the meantime on how you can grow your business and start growing your business in the online coaching space, then go ahead and go to www.onlinecoachaccelerator.com and join the waitlist by pressing the little button on the page. And if you're feeling bored, just read through the page as well and see what we have to offer at Online Coach Accelerator. So that is who is bringing us our episode. Thank you so much, OCU. You're the best. Now let's go back and talk about business and why it's hard and why it feels hard to grow your business and why it feels easy sometimes, but most of the time it feels incredibly difficult. So When it comes to growing your business and landing your first big self-employed paycheck and scaling to six figures or scaling to seven figures and beyond, or just like getting your first client. (laughs) Some of us are starting at that point, right? Um, For the most part, 
it's objective. Business is very, very objective. It's you pushing buttons on a laptop, you're typing things, you're doing certain tasks and actions. That's not the hard part because business is primarily driven by numbers, data, statistics. It's real-time feedback. It's a, it's a game of supply and demand, et cetera. You just need to take specific steps in a specific order and implement tasks at the right times. And that's really all business is. That's all it takes to grow a business. If you truly look at the objective tasks that you're doing. So yes, it takes time, it takes skill, and it takes a lot of patience to figure it out, but nothing about business is hard in and of itself. They are objective tasks and milestones, but the hard parts are really never about the business. The hard parts are getting rejected nine out of 10 times. It's watching everyone else succeed around you while you're continuing to struggle. It's getting like fucking exhausted by living outside of your comfort zone every single day. The hard part is never knowing if what you're doing is actually going to pay off and if it's just a waste of time. You just have never have the certainty until something works. The hard part is wondering where your next client is going to come from because you have no idea how to generate more clients. The hard part is battling scarcity mindset every single day, feeling financial burden, feeling the heaviness of all your self-doubt. It's like dealing with people who don't understand you. It's dealing with, you know, the isolation and the loneliness of being on this path that nobody else really gets. It's dealing with your childhood fears about being alone and being rejected and being forgotten and being unworthy. Like, come on, those come up to the surface to be healed as well. And ultimately, it's accepting that most of your friends and family will never understand or support you. And of course, the hardest part about business is suppressing all these frustrations until one thing sets you off and then you ugly cry in the nearest bathroom for an hour and a half just me? Okay. (laughs) I know there's people out there who can relate to that crazy, crazy cycle of, you know, being an entrepreneur. Those are the real hard parts. And so it really, yes, business is hard because ultimately it's a reflection of your mindset. It's a reflection of where you're truly at and business and being a self-employed person illuminates all the parts of you that are underdeveloped. They're unloved, they're undervalued, and it really shows you, you, very, very clearly. It shows you where you're at because I truly believe that in life, you can't attract what you want. You simply attract what you are. So you will find success in business and you most importantly, you'll find yourself if you're able to master your mindset. And that's why it's so important to start off by diving into the six keys to a six-figure mindset. So I'm going to lay out the six-figure mindset you need to adopt and completely fall in love with in order to actually make it big as an entrepreneur and to feel fulfilled while you're doing it. All right, so the first and most important key to a six-figure mindset is number one, do not mistake your alignment with your comfort zone. Bam. All right, let me unpack this one. I might whip your ass in the meantime while I'm explaining this. So if you're open for that, keep listening. Let's say you want to attract clients online. You want to hit that six-figure income. You want to drop a few bands at Whole Foods without a care like hashtag baller life, you want to live in abundance and you want to live in freedom. Like who doesn't want to do all those things, right? But what I hear a lot of people saying on the internet when they actually come to taking action on these things, they'll say, I hate sales calls. I just want people to reach out to me and sell in the direct messages. Or I just want to listen to my intuition and only post content when I'm feeling inspired and have really something good to say. Or they'll say, you know, cold messaging potential clients just doesn't feel in alignment with me. And I can respect all that, but let's go ahead and make sure that your quote unquote alignment is not your comfort zone in a cute disguise, because think about it. You never like doing things that make you uncomfortable, right? But that doesn't mean you shouldn't do them. I remember one specific story that I can tell you about me having to come to Jesus moment about this particular instance. And it was, I was talking to a mentor on the phone and he was asking me, you know, how's business going? How's everything? How's everything doing, Rachel? Give me the real, real. And I was like, okay, so everything's great. Um, I normally spend my time doing X, Y, and Z. And he's like, well, do you do sales? And I was like, well, no, my partner does sales uh, because, you know, my, my time is best spent elsewhere. And he was like, well, do you like doing sales? And I was like, I mean, yeah, I I like doing sales, but I just, you know, it's not my zone of genius. And uh, I don't really enjoy it as much as I enjoy doing content. So I just do content. And he was like, well, Rachel, (laughs) you never like things that you suck at. And I was like, oh, okay. And he said, if you like doing sales and if you were really, really good at doing sales and if you knew that anyone you stepped on a phone call with, you would be able to close them with confidence and without any effort, would you love doing sales? 
And I was like, yeah, I would love doing sales if that was how confident I felt with it. And he said, okay, well then be careful about what you're saying. You just don't like doing versus what you're not good at doing. And so what my takeaway was from that conversation is that there are personal preferences and then there's real strategy and smart action that actually makes you grow, learn, and iterate through discomfort and through failure. You know, the fastest way to learn about what's not working and what you need to fix is by failing. So it's important to know the difference there, especially when you're complaining about not being able to get any clients online, right? If you're still complaining about, oh, nothing's working, nothing's working, but you know that you're resisting the most important parts of what's actually going to move the needle because you just feel out of alignment. It's important to just wake up and realize that you might have to get uncomfortable. You might have to deal with some discomfort and some stretching of your comfort zone in order to actually make success happen for you. And as a business mentor myself, I encourage my students to act in alignment with their highest selves. So in other words, that's the version of you who is fully secure, unbothered as fuck and expansive and fearless and not act from what you feel right now in the midst of your identity changes and your uncertainty and your fear and your doubt. So always act in alignment with your highest self because that is truly where you're going to be able to make the most progress. Because if you quit or you change directions every single time that you feel uncomfortable, dude, you might as well just quit now and go get a job where you can be safe and comfortable, right? Because this is going to be an a constant unraveling of all of your bullshit right here in your face. And you're going to have to decide, okay, do I want to dive into this discomfort and learn how to make it, you know, my power, or do I want to play safe? So if you want freedom, you got to act like it and step up to the plate. The second key to a six figure mindset is to shine unapologetically. Oh, that feels good to say, but man, it feels shitty to actually do sometimes because you are stepping outside of the lines and claiming your position online as a leader and as a creator. And this will trigger some people. It will primarily trigger the people who have not yet discovered their own ability or their own power or their own light. And so they might look at you and feel threatened or judge you because you're doing something that they secretly believe they cannot do for whatever reason. So you might just dim yourself, you might dim your light and play small and play into old stupid beliefs or behaviors to fit in because you don't want to be rejected or you don't want to make other people feel uncomfortable. But that's just not any way to live. And if you actually want to achieve the results that you say you want, you need to be okay with letting go of the things that are currently holding you back. And you will become very aware of what's holding you back or who's holding you back once you start shining to your fullest extent. So quick story about this for me. I went through a time period where my clients were just, this is at the beginning of when I started OCA, my clients were constantly signing on new clients. They were just killing it. They were like testimonial after testimonial after testimonial. I literally couldn't keep up with it. And I was constantly posting testimonials to my Instagram stories. And it was amazing. And I can still do that today. I have literally a a phone folder thing on my iPhone that has thousands of screenshots of all of our students getting clients and just feeling amazing in their businesses. And so I was posting them every single day. And what had ended up happening is that it kind of triggered some other people in my space who were my friends, but they also have similar offers out there in the world. And they were a little bit threatened and they expressed that they were really uncomfortable with me doing that. And it messed with my mind a little bit because I was like, oh, fuck, I don't want to lose this friendship. But I also just don't want to stop shining because this is truly what's going on in my business. Like people are winning. Why would I ever stop talking about that? So it was this defining moment for me of like, do I actually stop talking about the success that I'm experiencing in my life to make other people comfortable, essentially? Or do I allow this friendship to dissolve if it needs to and continue doing what I know is right for me and what I know is right for my students and my clients and my potential you know, people who are going to look into this and see the results? And so it wasn't a question of business versus friendship. It was really a deeper question of like, do I dim my light to make other people comfortable or do I shine even brighter and hope that one day they come around and see that I'm just trying to do my best in life and that I just want that for the rest of the world as well. So the severe fear underneath all of this is the fear of being misunderstood or being misinterpreted or being judged for something that you're actually not. Another story is that when I bought my car, I bought a Porsche, painted full, like I was so stoked about it. And I posted pictures online. I was like, finally got it. Daddy's home, got my Porsche. And it was a big moment for me because it's my first real car 
that I had invested in. Or I know car is not an investment. Okay. If there's financial people out there being like, car is not an investment. It's a liability. I know. But I bought my Porsche. I was like, yay. And I posted pictures about it, knowing very well that there were going to be some percentage of people who would see that and just be like, oh, Rachel's a money hungry bitch. But I got a lot of messages saying, oh my gosh, that inspires me so much. I, that's my dream car. I can't wait to have this for myself. And that's truly why I posted it. I want people to see that. I started from nothing. I started with no audience, no income, literally just a dream and a lot of time to work hard. That's all I started with. And for me to work myself up to this point has been incredibly profound and I want to celebrate it. And I want to show other people what it means to celebrate. And so when I bought my car and I posted the pictures, I got a lot of messages saying, wow, that's amazing. That's so inspiring. But of course I did receive messages where they were saying, oh, you are so selfish or, you know, projecting their own insecurities onto me. What I realized is that people will love you and they will hate you and nothing will have anything to do with you. Like literally, if I took what other people are saying about me personally and I use that to find security in my identity, I would be the most scrambled human ever. And I would have no idea if I'm a good person or a bad person because everyone has a different opinion. No matter how hard you try to be a good person and no matter how much good you actually do do for the world and how much you donate to charities and you know, support different causes that mean something to you and actually put effort into making the world a better place, there's always going to be someone who just does not vibe with you and does not feel compelled to congratulate you on anything. In fact, they feel more compelled to cut you down and to project their insecurities and their judgment onto you. And it doesn't have anything to do with you. And so when you're on an entrepreneurial journey and you're looking at sharing your success with the world or sharing your journey with the world, even if it's not feeling ultimately successful and you're just trying to establish yourself, there's going to be people who have an opinion about that that doesn't match up with who you actually are trying to be. So if you want a bigger and brighter reality, you have to embody it. And so one of the ways that I deal with this is I imagine myself as a disco ball. (laughs) That's a quote. (laughs) That's a quote when taken out of context doesn't make much sense. But think about a disco ball. If you've never seen one, let me tell you about disco balls. They were my favorite thing in the whole entire world. Well, other than, you know, a couple other things. But disco balls are amazing because they don't actually emanate light. If you look at a disco ball, it doesn't actually shine. What it does is it just reflects. And there's lights all in the room that will project onto the disco ball, right? But the disco ball doesn't do anything except rotate and reflect, rotate and reflect. It doesn't project. But in life, that's kind of how I view myself. I'm just reflecting what's being projected at me. So if someone sees in me a really driven, intelligent, smart, and loving human, that's probably what exists within them. Like if you are listening to this podcast because you think I'm a cool person, chances are The things that you admire about me also exist in you and you just want to awaken them more. You find this podcast or this presence that I have inspiring because you recognize that in yourself and you want to dive deeper into that. Um, And the people who see me as annoying or something like that, they probably see that within themselves and judge that. So for example, if I'm being loud and boisterous and I'm like, woo, da, 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 making jokes about sex and saying fuck and all that stuff and someone gets triggered by that, Chances are they're just projecting a viewpoint that that is the wrong thing to do and that if they themselves did something like that, they would be rejected. So ultimately, the lesson here is that you need to shine. You absolutely need to shine if you're going to be successful in life. You need to believe in yourself more than anyone else believes in you. You need to have this unshakable sense of confidence and self-esteem that cannot be shaken by anyone else's opinion of you. And that's going to mean that you are your full, true, authentic self. And when there is attraction, there will also be repulsion. And it's okay for people to be repulsed by you because that means that someone else is going to be attracted to you. No matter how extreme you are, there will be people who love you and people who hate you and it will have nothing to do with you. So remember that when someone says, you can't do that, they really mean to say, I can't do that. And just watch and be patient because sooner or later, they'll ask you how you did it. (laughs) They'll come around. But remember, shining is the most important thing you can focus on when it comes to really embodying the six-figure mindset. The third key to a six-figure mindset is ruthless focus. Ruthless focus. Because in the beginning, unless you have guidance from like a super dope coach named Rachel Bell, you're going to be putting out your little tentacles anywhere 
that looks promising for success. You're going to be like, oh, webinar, that looks like it would be successful. Ooh, ebooks, I should do that. Ooh, an apparel line, I should make my own t shirts, goddamn. And you just will go off and try all these different things. And what your energy is doing is it's dispersing wide and far, not deep. And this is what we call shiny object syndrome. You're just chasing around shiny objects, hoping for the shortcut, hoping for the one thing that's going to help you make it big. And I talked about this in my interview with Jay Abraham on episode one of this podcast. And he was like, yeah, people chase tactics because that's what they think they need. And that's what every marketer out there is trying to sell is like the tactics instead of the actual overarching strategy of what you need in order to become truly successful for a long-term game. So Do not launch a new product every time you feel inspired. Don't start a cheap membership subscription site or an apparel line. God damn, please, no more apparel lines. (laughs) You can love a quote, put it on a bracelet or something for yourself. You don't need to sell t-shirts for it. (laughs) You need to stay focused on mastering and scaling one leveraged offer. If you truly want to make it big and you want to create something that lasts and stands the test of time. You need to focus so deeply on making sure that you're creating the best possible offer, the most effective, the most complete, and the most successful offer in your niche. Otherwise, you'll be launching for the rest of your life and chasing the next shiny object and never making true progress. I know that the reason why I did not become more successful sooner in my businesses is because I was focused on changing directions and changing ideas every two to three months. And it was like hopping from one idea to the next, not focusing deeply on one thing. And when I made a decision to focus on one thing for an entire year, which was my agency at the time, that's when I was able to scale it to six figures in less than a year. And I also dive into that in episode two, I believe, where I break down my journey of becoming successful online and basically my story of how I was able to do that. So yeah, shiny object syndrome is a major buzzkill here in the entrepreneurship community because it seems like you're making progress because you're switching ideas so often and learning all this new shit. But really, when you look back on the past year of what you've been doing, nothing's actually different in your bank account and the amount of impact that you're making in the world. So ruthless focus has to be a main priority for you. Yes, I'm talking to you. You, the person who's working on an online coaching business, but also doing an in-person job, but also doing website design, but also doing photography on the side. It's so important for you to just focus on one thing and become the best at that one thing, okay? That's how you're going to scale to a six-figure business and actually make it sustainable so that you don't burn out. Okay, the fourth key to a six-figure mindset is called this. And I want, I'm going to say it slow so that you can truly take it in. Not that it's complicated, but it's just so important. So here it is. The fourth key, micro speed, macro patience. I'll say that one more time. Micro speed and macro patience. This phrase, uh, I think it was coined by Gary Vaynerchuk. And I think that's the proper attribution, but I'm sure someone else said that in the world before he did. (laughs) But The idea behind this is that you do need to take messy action immediately. Micro speed means like taking speed at such a dramatic rate and making sure that speed of implementation is your main priority in your everyday life. My most successful students inside of Online Coach Accelerator, OCA, they don't wait for permission to implement. They do whatever I tell them to do immediately and then they ask questions after they've done it. The least successful students I notice will ask so many questions before they actually do something, overthinking it and trying to figure out, oh, how do I not fail with this instead of just taking action and being super speedy with with the way that they implement. So at the same time as having this micro speed and like messy action and doing things every single day, what you also need to be thinking about in this business is that it's a lifelong journey. So stop chasing a quick buck and actually invest time and energy into learning the fundamentals that will carry you through the next 5, 10, 15, 20, 30, 50 years of your entrepreneurial journey. Because if you skip steps, you will get a rude wake-up call somewhere along the line to align you back to what actually needs to get sorted out and needs to get done. So when you master this, you will never feel behind because you'll be zoomed out in perspective. And you'll never feel overwhelmed because you'll have a zoomed in motivation for action. So again, micro speed, macro patience. It's having the ability to get up every day and take wild amount of action, but also not getting overwhelmed, not feeling behind and not feeling stressed that things aren't happening for you. Like 
in an instant because you ultimately know that this is a lifelong journey and that you have plenty of time to learn things you need to learn and you have plenty of trust that everything will get done in its divine timing. Cool. So the fifth key to a six-figure mindset is radical ownership and self-leadership. Oh, I love this part. And if you've listened to me for any amount of time, you probably have heard me talk about leadership and how important it is in your business. Not only when you have no team, I'm not just talking about like leading a team and being like, let's go guys, let's all get this shit done. Everyone look at your to-do list and say, yes, (laughs) that's not leadership. I really mean leadership starts with yourself. It's how are you leading yourself through the day? And I won't lie, like there are always going to be plenty of things for you to stress about and complain about and feel overwhelmed by. And you can find all sorts of reasons why things are not going as planned and why everything sucks and and let yourself indulge in an anxious spiral of frustration. That's so easy to do and I totally get it. And I'm not perfect. Sometimes I still get into that spiral of frustration too. And I'm like, man, things are so fucking hard. Why is that happening? And our instinct sometimes is to complain or to force or to resist this and to argue with it. And we trick ourselves into thinking that we have no power so that we can avoid ownership and avoid the reality that we actually can change all of this and that we can view it in a different light. Because the truth is that when you truly own your life, you can change it. And change is rarely easy peasy lemon squeezy. It's more like difficult, difficult lemon difficult, right? But being the victim is so much easier than being the leader. So if you find yourself complaining or like wallowing in your own self-doubt or your self-pity or something like that, you find yourself gossiping and just being the victim in general, it's an easier path to take. And most people in this life will take that path. And that's exactly why they will never have what they truly want in their life because they're not taking ownership. And although being a victim is much easier than being the leader, my question for you is this. Were you really put on this earth to do what is easy? I will just answer that question for you because the answer is no. If you're listening to this podcast and you are actually on this path of self-growth and realization and expansion, you are not choosing the easy thing by any stretch of the imagination. And yes, you will encounter hard times, death, loss, setbacks, disasters, broken relationships, disasters. It will happen. But the reality is you're not in control of anything ever, but you are in charge So the key here is to stop arguing with reality. Like if something happens, you know, let's say that your website crashes in the middle of a launch and you're not able to make the money that you thought you were going to be able to make, you need to be able to quickly shift into a mindset of how can I use this and what's the lesson? And my belief is that you should always be looking for the lesson in everything. You should be able to stare at a blank wall for one hour and learn some type of lesson from that always be searching for the lesson in every single moment of discomfort. And that means that you have a choice right now. You can give up your power, you can complain, you can resist, or you can take radical responsibility for your life by changing, accepting, or leaving the situation. So don't listen to the fucking bullshit. You own your life. You can do, be, and achieve whatever you want. You just have to step up and lead. So remember, you're not in control, but you are in charge. And what you decide to do with every moment in terms of how you're going to lead yourself and others through that that time will determine your level of success in business because the only people who are able to make it big are people who are truly able to own themselves more than the world owns them. So leadership and radical responsibility. That's what I love. All right. Are you ready for the sixth and final key to a six-figure mindset? If you are, give me a whoop whoop. Nice. (laughs) All right. The sixth key is abundance versus scarcity mindset. So in every single moment, you are either, you know, making decisions, behaving or operating based on two things, expansion or contraction. Expansion feels like free. It feels like possibility. It feels open. It feels exciting. It feels abundant, right? And contraction feels smaller. It feels more controlled. It feels tighter. It feels less possible. It feels more cynical sometimes. It feels like scarcity. So having an abundant mindset does not mean overspending and going on Rodeo Drive and spending 10K on a purse and like all that stuff or taking uncalculated risks. Abundance doesn't mean that like you should always act outside of logic, okay? 
But it does mean that you need to think about possibilities instead of staying stuck in your fear. So I wanted to break down for you a couple signs and a couple telltale situations that might indicate that you are currently in a scarcity mindset because we all dive into these behaviors or these beliefs at some point. And it's really important that you're able to self audit and check in and say, okay, am I behaving in scarcity or am I behaving in abundance and take course correction according to what you need to step into. So a couple signs that you're in scarcity mindset. Number one, you compare yourself to others. If you find yourself comparing yourself to others, like, why am I not like X, Y, Z? Why am I not as pretty as this person or as funny as this person? Or like, why am I not as successful as this person? You are in a scarcity mindset instead of realizing that, hey, if this person's winning and they're being successful and they're being beautiful and they're being themselves, that's good for the world. And that means that I have permission to be myself and to do all these things for me too. There's always more where that came from, right? Another sign that you're in scarcity mindset is that you hold yourself back from being yourself in fear of losing love or approval. And you're scared of like having this void of someone leaving your life or judging you or something like that. So you don't want to lose it. So you hold yourself back and you don't actually let yourself be who you truly are. Another telltale sign that you are in scarcity mindset is that you don't let yourself relax or take time off because you are afraid of stopping work or you don't let yourself let loose and party a little bit and go wild for a while because you're afraid of losing something. You're afraid that you'll lose motivation. You're afraid that you'll lose an opportunity. You're afraid that you'll lose work hours. You're afraid that you'll lose a deal. You're, you're just afraid that you're going to lose something. So you don't let yourself do what you actually need to do or be who you actually need to be. Another sign is that you're constantly stressed out about money, even though your worry doesn't actually change anything about your situation, except make it worse or more painful. So here, if you're constantly stressed about money and you're always worrying and you're always crunching the numbers and nothing's changing the situation about your worry, that's you being in scarcity. It's a different situation. When you are in abundance mindset, you can still be broke as a joke, okay? <laughs> you really can. And you can still behave abundantly because you have trust that everything is coming to you in perfect timing. And you're able to make better decisions and feel more grounded and feel more optimistic and happy and positive, even in situations where it may look like the odds are against you. But you want to make sure that you're not constantly stressing in scarcity. You can approach the same exact situation and get better solutions and get better problem solving skills by being in an abundant state instead of scarcity. But sometimes we just stay in scarcity because we're like, ah, this is the only thing I've seen my parents do growing up. And this is the only thing that seems like it's going to change something is if I get so stressed out and worried about it. But the truth is you can shift into abundance even when a situation is financially stressful. Okay, the next sign that you're in scarcity is that you are stingy with knowledge, compassion, or connections. Like you don't really want to share your knowledge with the world because what if they don't pay you? Um, this is typical and experts are like, well, how much information is too much information to give? They're stingy with their knowledge and you're stingy with compassion that you're able to extend to other people and you're stingy with the connections that you're able to share Another sign that you're in scarcity mindset is that you might be pessimistic about the future and you're always looking for the next problem. So instead of looking at the future and being like, wow, I'm so excited. It's going to be so great. You're looking at the future and being like, oh, there's going to be so much more trouble ahead. I'm going to have to be ready for X, Y, Z. And you're not really focused on what you're going to gain. You're more focused on what you're what you might lose or what you could lose. Another big sign that you're in scarcity mindset is that you resent your competitors if you are triggered or you resent your competitors or competition in general, and a lot of people say collaboration over competition, I'm like, you don't need to collaborate with your competitors if you don't want to, but you definitely shouldn't hate them because they are doing what exactly what you're doing, which is just trying to do their best. And if you are thinking that they're taking clients from you, or you think that them doing their thing and being successful in their way is in any way cutting into your own success, that's your shit. Let me tell you right now, nobody is cutting into your success. You are doing that to yourself by viewing it as such. And I have a very realistic and robust mindset when it comes to competition and competitors, because there's a lot of people who will just rip off the OCA sales page. They'll literally copy and paste my captions. And <laughs> like, it's been ridiculous how many people try to emulate what I do 
and just copy paste everything that I do into their own thing and try to make it big and try to land a few clients. And they might land a few clients, but you know what? I am not worried about that at all because I know, I know that if I'm doing anything right, people will eventually try to rip it off. People will eventually try to do the same thing. And so, of course, I've watched so many other people, including some past students come through my program and then, you know, start teaching my material to their clients. And although that is absolutely not okay from a legal perspective and, you know, we take right compassionate action when it comes to that, it's important to realize that if anything is a good idea, it will be ripped off. It will be one of your competitor's ideas at some point as well. And you need to be able to step into abundance and be like, oh, that's totally okay. There's way more where that came from. And honestly, the right people are going to find me and nothing will stand in the way of that because I'm truly the most magnetic force here on earth when it comes to this topic. So you have to, you have to really believe in yourself. You have to really believe in yourself enough to love your competitors. You don't have to collaborate with them if you don't want to. But the truth is, if you hate them, that's just more of an energy drain on you. And they're just doing their thing. And honestly, you're just torturing yourself by resenting your competitors. So that's that's one thing. Another thing that you're in scarcity mindset, another telltale sign is that you're avoiding risk and you don't want to take risks or do anything that you secretly want to do. Like, let's say you want to move to San Diego and be neighbors with me. But you're like, man, what if everything fails, even if you have the money in your bank account right now to do that? And you could do that if you want to. You might say, oh, but what if I fail? What if I lose something? What if this bad thing happens? And you let that run your life instead of the idea that if you do that, you could make even more abundance occur in your life. So that's just a little PSA. Any of you want to move to San Diego and be my neighbor, do it. It'll be the best business decision of your life. (laughs) We'll go for walks together. We'll drink coffee. We'll have meetups. It'll be so fun. Okay, back to the scarcity mindset. So another couple signs that you're in scarcity mindset is that you're always thinking about the cost rather than the investment. So let's say that you are trying to grow your business and you learn that a program costs $10,000. You might be like, oh my gosh, that's so much money just leaving my bank account or leaving my credit card or just leaving me. And you're not focused on what you're going to gain from that experience, right? And there have been times, and here's the hidden fear that I want to address. A lot of you guys are afraid to invest because you're like, what if I don't make it back though? Like it's not, you know, guaranteed that if I invest this thing, I will make it back. It's just not guaranteed. And nobody in their right mind could guarantee that to you. But what's important to realize is that in any situation where you expend energy, resources, time, money, There is some sort of investment. There is some sort of lesson that you can learn from that. And this goes back to number five of taking radical ownership and self-leadership over the situation and finding the lesson in that investment, even if it was a quote unquote bad investment. I've made plenty of investments. I've invested hundreds of thousands of dollars into something that did not move the needle in my business at all. But you know what I got out of it? was a better bullshit detector. I got out of it a much better sense of myself and what I'm capable of on my own. And I understood reputation on a different level, the people that I was working with or considering working with. And that to me was worth it. Because if I can spend a couple hundred thousand dollars on a bad lesson, and then I can turn around and teach people about it and and warn people against these things, then you know what? That was worth it. And I always say, don't learn from, (laughs) learn from my mistakes, not yours. Well, we'll learn from your mistakes too, but like learn from my pain so that you don't have to make the same mistakes as me in your own entrepreneurship journey. And the final sign of you being in scarcity mindset is that you're always thinking, how can I get by with as little as possible? You're like, how can I get the cheapest thing? How can I do it the fastest? How can I do it the quickest? How can I do it the easiest? Instead of thinking, what's the right thing to do, right? So let's say you're at this point in your business where you know you need to hire a virtual assistant or some sort of team member. And you're like, well, I could just, you know, spend two extra hours per week doing this myself instead of realizing that your time is fucking priceless. And that is the only resource you can never get back. And you're just holding yourself back from investing in something that could free up more of your time because you're so afraid of losing that money. And you're not more focused on the the time and the spaciousness and the energy that you'll gain from having more support. So those are a couple of signs that you're in scarcity mindset. And my best advice for that is to focus so much on every area of your life and every behavior that you have and every decision that you make, most importantly, 
and ask yourself, what would abundance do? What would I do if I was truly unshakable, if I was infinitely confident in myself and my ability to produce results? And what would I do if I had an unshakable sense of confidence about this? That is your higher self thinking and an abundant way of thinking. So my invitation to you is that if you notice that you are part of, you know, partly in your scarcity mindset sometimes, shift into abundance and really make a commitment to yourself that you are going to step up and be a better person for yourself, for your family, for your future, for your clients, everything. So guys, that concludes the six keys to a six-figure mindset. In summary, what we covered was number one, be aware and don't mistake your alignment with your comfort zone. Number two was to shine unapologetically. Number three is to have ruthless focus. Number four, micro speed, macro patience. And number five, radical ownership and self-leadership. You absolutely need these. And finally, number six is abundance versus scarcity mindset. Understand these things and you will be well on your way to having this six-figure mindset that will carry you through every single stage of your business with ease. And that doesn't mean the path will be easy. It just means you will be able to operate it and navigate this crazy journey with way more confidence and flow and ease and grace than ever before. And that's what I truly want for you. I don't want you to have the easy life. I want you to have the right life, the right life for you. And a lot of times those two things are not the same. So I hope that you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please screenshot, share it, do all the things. And if you have any requests for the next episode, I would love to hear about it as well. Please hit me up on Instagram. Let's start a conversation. And yeah, I would love to see you in my inbox. I will see you in the next episode, guys. Have an amazing weekend. And remember to shift into abundance and make that your homework for this week. Think about all the different thoughts that you have, the behaviors that you have, the decisions that you make, and ask yourself, what would I truly do if I was awesomely abundant right now? Have a great weekend and I'll talk to you guys soon. See ya. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you did find it super valuable, you just want to share it with the world. Make sure you screenshot, post and tag me on Instagram so I can stock your profile and we can connect more. And to get notified on the next episode here on Payday, go ahead and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes so you never miss a beat. Get out there, secure the bag, and I will see you next Payday.